Hello everyone, Dr. Alex Vasquez here, and I'm pleased to introduce to you some of my most recent work, published as Pain Revolution for Migraine and Fibromyalgia. This is an excerpt from my larger textbook, Inflammation Mastery, 4th Edition. I'd like to introduce this work to you and also provide you some orientation to the websites that are mentioned on the cover of the book, ICHNFM.org and InflammationMastery.com forward slash pain. You'll be able to find additional research at ICHNFM.org. Let's take a look at some of this new information now. This new information explores the relationship between chronic or persistent or what I would call sustained pain and fatigue and inflammation as you can see represented here from the image on the cover of the book. This information is printed in a color book and is also available in digital format via the Kindle application from Amazon.com which makes the work available on your phone, computer, or iPad or tablet computer. Again, this work is an excerpt from the larger textbook Inflammation Mastery 4th Edition. Let's take a look now at some of the inside of that material. Obviously we have a cover page and then this provides you an orientation to the contents, migraine cluster and other types of headaches, fibromyalgia and complex regional pain syndrome, an article reprint from 2006 titled Intracellular Hypercalcinosis, and of course in the printed book then followed by the index. This work also provides two introductory videos to the Functional Inflammology Protocol, which is recalled by the FIND SEX acronym. As many of you know, all of my new work is based on the FIND-SEX acronym, and that allows for easy recall and therefore for easier application of this clinically oriented material, as you can see here in a modified diagram originally published in 2006 in Integrative Rheumatology. Let's take a look now at the section on migraine headaches. So in the section on migraine headaches, you can see that I dive in very quickly on the third page of that material into some new models of how to understand the pathophysiology of not only chronic pain, but specifically in this chapter, migraine headaches. You can see that I begin the discussion talking about mitochondrial dysfunction, how that leads to brain inflammation and fragility or overexcitation of brain neurons. I provide several different diagrams and different ways for you to understand that material. And again, in the printed book, as well as in the digital format, all of this is provided in color to help the material come to life for you and to remain more interesting to kind of pull you through the information because I think you'll find this information very helpful either for yourself as a patient or as a practicing clinician. I provide quite a bit of detail on the intracellular hypercalcinosis model that I originally published in 2006, here showing how that applies specifically to brain neuron excitation and a vicious cycle of excitation, brain inflammation, chronic pain, and mitochondrial impairment. I also provide an updated protocol for the management of elevated levels of homocysteine, which is relevant not only for migraine and cardiovascular disease, but also for chronic pain, fibromyalgia, and chronic fatigue syndrome. Let's take a look now at the section on mitochondrial impairment, which is a key component of both migraine headache, chronic fatigue syndrome, and of course fibromyalgia. Many of you know I've published quite extensively on mitochondrial dysfunction and how to improve mitochondrial performance with the use of nutritional supplements and lifestyle modification. We'll take a look at a little bit of that work now as we progress through the introduction to this new information on migraine headache and fibromyalgia. The section on fibromyalgia has been completely updated. Many of you know I originally published this work back in 2008 in a commissioned monograph. Meanwhile, I've continued to survey the research and integrate new information into the model that I originally published, and I'm still quite pleased with the model that I originally presented in 2008, and if I may say so, even more pleased with the updated model now published in 2016. I also provide some historical review and perspective on our understanding of pain perception and how the nervous system actually is changed by the perception of pain to then lead to these chronic or persistent or sustained painful inflammatory and neuroinflammatory states. This information applies very clearly to persistent pain states such as migraine headaches, cluster headache, fibromyalgia, and again complex regional pain syndrome. I review the diagnosis and pathophysiology of fibromyalgia very extensively. I also review the drugs that are used in the treatment of fibromyalgia and discuss some of the controversy and risks associated with those treatments. 
I also discuss some of the publicized information from groups such as the American Pain Society, American College of Rheumatology, and American Academy of Family Physicians because I think that those perspectives need to be placed in a pathophysiologic or scientific context because a lot of the information that's being publicized, in my opinion, is very discordant with the published research that really helps us understand these conditions and manage them and prevent them much more effectively. As I've done previously and increasingly in my work, I show you some case reports so you can see how these conditions can be managed clinically. And I also show you in several different diagrams different ways of perceiving this information so that again you can understand the pathophysiologic basis and therefore ultimately treat and prevent these conditions with much greater effectiveness. As I mentioned before, part of the pathophysiologic basis for our understanding and therefore our treatment of migraine headaches, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome revolves around the connection between mitochondrial impairment and brain inflammation. So again, I provide several diagrams, several modifications of the same image, so to speak, so that you can understand this in different ways and ultimately arrive to a much more profound understanding of the pathophysiology that underlies these conditions. And therefore, again, you can treat these conditions much more effectively when you understand the pathophysiology and don't have to rely on pharmacologic analgesic drugs. So you can see that represented in this diagram as well as the diagram on the following page, again connecting mitochondrial impairment with oxidative stress and systemic inflammation as well as brain-specific inflammation that again characterizes migraine headaches, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, and complex regional pain syndrome. Many of us are aware of or personally concerned by the topic of brain inflammation and neurodegeneration, so I provide a very extensive conversation on that topic showing how pro-inflammatory foods, physical trauma, infectious microorganisms, and vaccinations can all promote brain inflammation, and this can of course be exacerbated by physiological stresses such as sleep deprivation and obesity. What we notice, for example, in patients who have fibromyalgia and other long-term chronic pain syndromes is that they consistently show evidence of not only persistent pain, which is often treated in the medical model with analgesic drugs, but also a specific pattern of inflammation that changes the way the brain actually functions and creates a state of what we call central sensitization, which is characterized by brain inflammation. So when we understand that brain inflammation is the underlying key to central sensitization or chronic pain, then we have to understand how to treat that brain inflammation to alleviate the pain. If we simply use analgesic drugs to address the pain, then we never effectively address the brain inflammation that's causing the central sensitization, and that's what's leading to these heightened states of pain sensitivity that we see again in migraine headaches, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and complex regional pain syndrome. Based on that more comprehensive understanding, we have new ways to intervene more effectively in, again, the prevention and treatment of these conditions. And I show you in the book how all of this information fits together into a unified and very cohesive science-based model. I also show you how different patterns of gastrointestinal dysbiosis characterized by small intestine bacterial overgrowth set the stage for chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, complex regional pain syndrome, also of course irritable bowel syndrome, and other related conditions such as interstitial cystitis. Again, we have to understand the underlying pathophysiology if we're ever going to understand these conditions and therefore treat them effectively. So what you'll see in the upcoming months is an educational series of videos that serve to introduce some of the topics and vocabulary, but also aid in the clinical application of this information specific to migraine and fibromyalgia, but also of course applicable to other clinical conditions, especially those characterized by persistent pain. Eventually this will be an educational series of videos available online for educational purposes as well as for continuing medical education and continuing education credits for medical doctors, naturopathic doctors, chiropractic doctors, and other healthcare professionals. So thank you for your interest in this work. You'll find more details at the website ICHNFM.org. That's the website for the International College of Human Nutrition and Functional Medicine. Also on one of my personal websites, inflammationmastery.com forward slash pain. Personally, I find this information very fascinating, and I encourage you to take a look at some of the upcoming educational videos. 
Again, thank you for your attention and interest, and I look forward to sharing this information with you very soon.